we are back for our series, Romancing the Stones, Season 2. And today, we are reviewing more games by Kim Jisuk. Oh, let's make sure you can see his portrait here. <laughs> in the background. So I guess we'll dive in. Um... I was reading, and I noticed that Kim Jisok's uh, strongest point in his career, uh, the top of the top of his career, uh, was between 2014 and 2017. So I have one game from 2014 and two games from 2016. I kind of picked randomly and haven't really been able to review them yet. But I thought it would be very cool to review them together. And that's kind of what Promancing the Stones is all about. We kind of have a quick overview of pro games and kind of dive in and get a feel for uh, the person's play style. And the idea is I want to try to find the pro that I want to emulate, the pro whose games I want to memorize, the pro who I think is closest to my ideal play style to memorize games and, and get better at playing Go. So let's dive in, right? This first game is the 19th Sam Samsung Cup. Uh, the game again was in 2014, and this is Kim Josok as white and Rui Naiwei as black. So let's dive in. Rui Naiwei starts with a 4 4. We have a 4 4 response in the diagonal corner. <laughs> Lots of all 4 4s this game. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so what happens first? An approach on the bottom, that makes total sense. White backs off, uh, pretty plainly. And then, this is interesting to me, uh, the large knights move and closure right away, instead of maybe backing off to k3. So this is the first difference between how I might play, but this is Roy and I way. This is one of the other, from season one, we did review Roy Naiwei, um, a few games from her. So, uh, this is interesting, very, uh, I'm going to take a large territory, but this can be invaded later, and it can be poked and attached underneath, and so I'm a little puzzled by this play. Uh, Kim Josaka approaches the upper right to kind of try to split up the potential in this area, and of course, gets pincered. This is all really straightforward so far. Um, yep, it takes the 3-3 three, three right away. Mm -hmm. And this is just our standard Joseki right here in the jump. And then plays away. Okay, plays away for the jump up. So if I were white right now, I would probably attach underneath. As I've improved, making larger enclosures has become much more appealing but it took some time to find out how to use them, says so Get Lactal Star Mac Lactica. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, but instead, white just backs off calmly. And so black was thinking kind of the same thing. I was thinking that white's going to want to attach underneath, so black defends right away. Shoulder hit is a reduction move, not necessarily an invasion. So I'm a little bit curious as to why we wouldn't jump here. Um, I suppose black might wedge. And then this is really bad shape for what? Okay, that's why we don't jump. That's why we just extend. Got it. Oop. Go back to the real game. White extends. This is just more reduction. So, as white, I might turn here, but that seems extra heavy for this kind of reduction move. So a jump makes kind of sense. And maybe just jumping out lightly, I'm not sure. Jumping out is the pro move. Okay. And then there's some cut shenanigans. So I would say probably a table shape. Ah, an extended table. Interesting. So that means if black tries to push through and cut, like, we just don't care. Because it's a ladder this way. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Makes sense. So black tries to enclose a large area while putting pressure on these stones. A move like this is not on my radar at all. Can just hook just jumps out. Uh, makes more shape. Oh, this is kind of a reduction while building kind of eye space. Nice move. I love it. We expected the cut. So now we're in like danger, danger territory. This is kind of scary. <laughs> Uh, what is Kim Chisok gonna do? I know he's a fighter. So he takes a forcing move. And Bahane. That seems really bold. Um. But Black plays away. Is Black saying that no matter what you do, you're not gonna live here? Or is Black saying. Oh, I know what Black's saying. Black's saying I'm going to threaten to kill this group as well. Marine Highway is being very aggressively fighting. We didn't see that in the games we reviewed of her in Season 1, though. That's what's very peculiar. So Black has to stay strong because this group is technically weak as well. This group isn't so weak. It's kind of out. It's got some eye shape. It can jump to Q7, right? And make eye shape on the right side as well. So white is using the weakness of those two stones to, I guess, get a little bit stronger here. I would expect black to push through right away. Okay, let's just see how this unfolds. I'm having trouble guessing what's going to happen. Because these are pro games, and I don't have the reading capability of the pros. Clearly, clearly. Connect. Extend, yep. Take the stone for eye shape, and then... See, if I were white, I would just extend down. But... Uh, Kim just sucked on these. For this kind of connection. Oh, it's good play. So cool. Love the Tsujis. This extension, I don't quite understand. Is it Sente? So if we extend here, and Black ignores, and then we... on air something here. Push, push, push. Doesn't seem Sente. But Black responded. Okay. Black's taking the one stone. Now Black's super thick with influence in the center. Is probably alive with this group. If I were Black, I'd be looking at um, probably invading here in the top with this thickness. White's still living. Oh, this is one of those moves I just don't ever see. <clears throat> it's probably for endgame later, right? Or is it just so we can get N1 and Sente? It is. We have N1 and Sente, so now we can just live with H3. But we already had I shape up here, right? Hmm. Okay, so White's protecting the top. This is a common invasion point. Attach both places. Cool. <laughs> okay, timing to take that. Just extend, yeah. Hane's big. We Hane back. Double Hane. What are we gonna do? Are we gonna cut and then extend? Or are we gonna triple Hane? Just extend. Okay. Then cut. Okay. <laughs> and now, uh, gotcha. So now that we have these three, we can potentially play here. Are we giving... No, this group is already alive. Yeah. 
But black seems to be surrounding an incredible territory here. All right, we're putting additional pressure on this group. That makes sense. Connecting out here. So the evaluation is that blocking this area is larger than these three stones, right? And that's why we blocked on this side. But yeah, it's still open over here. Good point. Good point, Kim Jisok. Okay. Uh... Right, we extend. And then regardless of which direction we go, black is in Atari. Oh, but now it's a call. Wonderful. Wonderful pro cos. Wait a minute, how is this a co threat? It's not big enough to take, is it? <laughs> yet another way I just I can't think like this yet. It's it's so amazing how pros play. It really is. It blows my mind. Every time I review a pro game. I'm blown away about their timing, about their daringness, the level of their reading skills. It's fantastic. Okay. Um, this makes sense. We're not only making shape a little bit more shape for ourselves, but then diving in here. Because this black area is just so huge. Uh, that would kill off those. That's actually quite large, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we block. Connect. That's for the life of the group. Got it. What? What? <laughs> Hold on. Hold the phone. <laughs> Wait just a dang minute. <laughs> Everyone lost complete interest in the co. Roy Naiwei plays this one point endgame. Gote endgame, I might add. And then Kim just sucks, surrounds the two stones here. What? <laughs> oh no. I don't understand. It's okay that I don't understand. <laughs> It's okay that I don't understand. <laughs> hmm. Okay then. <clears throat> Moving on. See now things are making sense again. Black block down here to keep their stones connected. <laughs> Maybe they drop the stones when aiming for another move. <laughs> it makes you wonder, right? Like, everybody's fighting like mad for this call, and all of a sudden, they both just lose complete interest in it. Oh, now there's another co. Oh, maybe, maybe this was move, move was to make more co threats from here, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Disconnect? Uh-huh. I think white became alive, so the code didn't matter. Okay. That could be too, yeah. Okay, that's big. Yeah, there's more co-threats here now. Is this the co-threat for the life of this group? 
It is. We blocked. No, we cannot. That's what we Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Wait, is that the end? That's the end of the game. So, the result is that uh, White wins by resign. And I suppose with this large area pretty much gone, uh, something in here is going to die because it's a double, like it's a double coat for the life of these stones. And then, well, black has large territory here and here, though. But white's territory on top. Oh, my goodness. Let's see. I know there's a way to estimate the score. Uh, score estimator in Sabaki says white is ahead by 11 and a half. And that's assuming that all of this is blacks. Yeah, and all of this is blacks. We're still also saying that these are dead, so some of these are dead. So yeah, it's probably a large enough margin um, for a pro to resign. 11 and a half points is a lot of points in a pro game, right? Absolutely. So, okay. Interesting. Interesting how that game took place. Uh, I really felt like Kim Jeshok was weak and being attacked almost the entire time. And all of a sudden, he won. That's how I felt about this game. He was weak here. He was weak here. And he was being attacked on both fronts. He was a little bit weak down here as well. Yeah, Estacal 4. Um, this, he's one of my favorite players so far. Uh, what do you think of him? And then all of a sudden, he turned the whole game around with a couple codes on one. Very interesting. This was a fascinating game. And I am excited to look at the next one, so let's open it up. Very smart player, yes. I agree with you. Okay. That was from 2014. The next one is from April 13th, 2016. And black in this one is Chen Yoye. So let's see what happens in this game. Chen Yaoye opens 3-4. Oh, Chen Yaoye has my favorite opening! Oh my goodness! Let's see what happens. And White takes a 3-4, okay. White approaches right away. Um, yeah, I tend to enclose here as well. When my opponent takes this 3-4, I often enclose one space farther. High approach. Are we going to play... He played the tiger's mouth, you guys. This might be before AI. Or like, before everyone had AI on their computers. <laughs> Whoa. Move is not on my radar, you guys. And then he takes the small enclosure instead of the one space farther. Because black has this stone here and wants to take this side, right? Okay. Black plays the high approach. One space back. Not the knight's move. Nice move ends in Gote, though. 
2016 was the first year of AlphaGo. Oh, okay, okay. So we draw back. That's interesting. I mean, that's normal, right? Derp, derp. We're actually playing... We actually played this Joseki in a pro game. What? Oftentimes, whenever I take the slide or my opponent takes the slide, I'm like, ah, oh, the slide. But look, it's in a pro game. All right. <laughs> Honey, draw back, okay. Sinuki, that makes sense. Put pressure on this group. I would expect Toy to jump up here. October 2015 was the match against Van Hui. Okay, so this is post-AI, just a little bit. White Tanuki, very interesting. And now takes the top corner, which is what they threatened to do in the first place, right? I assume this is some kind of Joseki. I assume this is some kind of Joseki. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's some wall you got there, Black. So I should probably play C. C10, right? No. White's gonna defend their little group up there. And Black's going to play D10. I guess maybe the attach at L, L, L17 is a big deal? Hmm, question mark. The three-point corner clearly pays, pays off that wall. Yeah. <laughs> Right? I don't... I do not understand this sequence. <laughs> and that's okay. I don't have to understand it. Okay. So, Black protects their cutting point. They have the extension. So they're probably going to get just a little bit in here. This is a reduction move. But White's group is still pretty weak. So how is White going to get strong here? Are they just going to jump to G10? Are they going to maybe cap this group here? I don't think that really helps Black. Are they going to jump down? I would say probably over here, the cap here. Let's see what happens. No. <laughs> we Atari. <laughs> Not, nothing I expected happened. Cool. Love it. Well, I guess Black Scroop is cut off here, though. And doesn't really have eyes, right? So they, they're on the run as well. Just a little bit. I love it. I love this move. It's just so bold. It's like, I'm going to take down your entire wall. Your one stone isn't going to get anything. My little three stones, they look like nothing, but they're going to take down the giant. Oh, it's so bold. Okay. So, black connects. Well, white gained just a little bit of strength here, so now they're coming back and attacking this group by surrounding here, and threatening to invade the right side. Multi-purpose moves like this, I, I would like to focus on moves like this a little more, that do like three or four things. It's hard for me to find them, or to think this way, I guess. Stay connected? Okay. They are so easy to do very, very wrong, though, right? <laughs> yeah, your move did a lot of things, but most of them hurt you. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. Okay. Good enough. We come out. Push through. Cut. Yep. That's fighting spirit. So now Black has a little weak group here. Black has a little weak group here. Black has a group that is on life support up here. 
Chen Yong is having some trouble this game. If I play Tengen, I'm working all four corners at once, right, Ken Cabot? <laughs> truly, truly. All right, so Black is adding some pressure to this white group while trying to connect to the right side. Makes sense. White does not care about this cut at all. Fascinating. The middle is bigger because this group living is important to this game. I see. Still not connecting here. This group is dead now, right? This top white group? Like, if black gets h17, it's just dead? Sente? Is, is this what we're doing? We're gonna kill the whole thing? Oh my goodness, we're gonna kill the whole thing, you guys. Wait. Why can't black cut here? All right. Because we Atari and it's dead, right? Yeah. But if we do that, can't we do this? And kill off white entirely? No, we can't. I see. We die instead. Got it. That's why. Sorry, y'all. Uh, part, of, part of reviewing these games is like trying to figure out why my intuition is wrong when the pro plays a move that I don't understand. Good, good. <laughs> All right. Uh, yep, Atari, take the stone, yep. And do we extend or just capture? Probably just capture, yep. Push, block, Atari, take. That don't work. Or do it work? That does work. Mm-hmm. So we connected there anyway, because the situation changed, right? Because now these stones have gotten out. So the thing we looked at before doesn't work anymore if these stones are out. Got it. So Kim just sucks stones. They look super weak. Black looks fine. But when we look at this, black really doesn't... Black has one eye. And only one eye. But I think black can connect just with e6, right? Yeah. And now these uh, five stones are in a lot of danger. Can they live? Oh, we're threatening to kill on an even larger scale. Of course we are. Oh, amazing. <laughs> yeah, has to connect. And then we make our shape. And then we drop... No. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I was looking at this wedge here. Maybe it comes later. And it turns into a co for like a quarter of the board. <laughs> that would be a game I would smile about all day. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, wedge, yep. Yeah. And then just B3, right? Yep. Mm. If I were white, I would bamboo. 
That's why I'm not white. The attach under. I was expecting uh, G7. But the attach under gives us eye shape, which is important since we're not alive. Right. What changed about this situation that makes... Oh, we're alive now. We're probably alive now. So now we can come back and connect and threaten to push, throw in Atari, come out, and separate this group. Right. So yeah, that makes sense. And again, make our eyes and attack some more. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, Black's just gonna K6, right? No, of course not. Um, okay. This is good style, right? You make strong shapes, you connect to your other groups. Yeah, it's good style. Black might give up the one stone. Indeed he does. Draw back. Nope. Atari. All right, we have to come back here and kill this huge dragon, right? Now that we're alive, dragon is dead. Beautiful. Is that dragon truly dead? Seems dead. This... Wait, what about this move? Can we push and connect, and then... Still dead. <sighs> okay. But maybe Black gets compensation... <laughs> with a go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the shape. Me eye for another eye. Yep. Oh, okay. Black lives. Wait. Extend. Connect. Sorry. Kill the eye? We could. That's not what was played, though. <clears throat> White instead wants to live the lower right corner? It is important. Yeah, it seems like white could have killed either d5 or b2 area. d5. Oh, right, after this, then black can play d5. Got it. Or b2. No, black b2s and we just Han A. But then with the Atari, right. Okay, with that extra liberty, you can Atari these three stones. And then take at B4. I see what you're saying. Good point. Okay, Black's taking territory. Yeah, I like both of these players. Chen Yao Ye is like, probably, f from season one, he was my fourth choice. Um, or, excuse me, fifth choice. I picked my four. <laughs> uh, but Chen Yao Ye was like a close fifth so both of these players play amazing of course of course so now we're just playing endgame right ish and I'm I'm running out of mental juice just a little bit. So I'm... I might be speeding along endgame a bit too much. 
But this is impressive how white surrounded this area by pressing black down on here, on this side, and using some of the thickness here. This is pretty cool. Pretty cool. White totally ignored because black read what you guys read. That, or white read what you guys read, that black is already alive. So. But honestly, all of these stones for two, three, four, five, six points. Um, white's happy about that. I'm, I'm positive white's happy about that. <clears throat> And White just, <laughs> White's like, yeah, go ahead, have six more points, it's fine. I don't mind. I'm far enough ahead. <laughs> Fascinating. Yep, it's all endgame now. Connect. Yeah, I would have been obsessed about killing this group. But Kim jong Suk is like, you know what? I'm going to go elsewhere. We're going to do other things. We're far enough ahead now. We don't have to kill it. Admirable. Admirable. And... <clears throat> That's the end of the game. White wins by resign. Let's check the score estimator on this and see how close it is. It says white plus seven and a half. Yeah. Looks fairly accurate. And that's enough. Seven and a half points is enough to win. For sure. Of course, we all know that, right? But in my Q heart, I want to win by 30. I want to win by 50. I want to win by 180. Seven and a half points is enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Still an exciting game. Got to really see profiting through attacking. That's very interesting to me. Yeah. And living in cramped spaces like this, this was very cool. Very, very cool. And then this kind of endgame, pressing your opponent down when you have thickness on this side to build up. During endgame, this was really, really huge. So yeah, all in all, fun, exciting game? I would say so. Very confusing Joseki here, but Black got almost nothing out of that wall. Almost next to nothing. So that was really cool to see too. All right, I just have one more game uh, selected for the day. <clears throat> Let's open it up. So this game is also from 2016. And a big part of this segment of Season 2 is seeing these pros at their very, very best. So I want to see, you know, their best play at the height of their career. Um, and that'll give me a better idea of who to go with moving forward, especially. So let's, let's see who we got. Playing black is Kim Jisuk. And playing white is Kijay. Okay. And this is from December 1st, 2016, so almost 2017. Let's see how these two play against each other. Kim Jae Suk is playing 3 4. And I think this is the first game we've reviewed today where he is black. Kijay with 4 4. 
Dual 3 4 is oh. Heart. I love this opening. <laughs> Home base. All right. And we have a 3 4 there. Enclosure. Again, the small knight enclosure, not the large knight. Uh, maybe I need to reconsider my tendency to large knights here. Small knight seems to be what the pros prefer. Okay, this is pretty standard. Back off. Tiger's mouth. Jump. Attach. <laughs> Beautiful. And Xiong said this is still common too. Uh huh. Yeah. It's it's a good opening. It lends to really cool fights too. I want to see how this uh, attach works again. Attach, on A, extend, drop, turn, extend, kind of how you would expect, and then back off. Back off three. Okay, so this indirectly protects this area while building something large on the front. But you're undercut as well. Hmm. And you still have invasion points. Interesting. If I were black right now, I would approach I at E6. Two space low so he doesn't get pincered. Interesting. White takes the corner. Black approaches O3. No. Other approach. <sighs> it's good. I mean, it's... It's good. I can't argue with it, obviously. I guess if you approached O3, your opponent would probably just pincer both stones at once. So this way, you kind of push white that way. You build up this area, and then you can always come back and work with the stone a little later. Or not. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, this feels so loose. Like, white can do so much. Like, white is super solid here, and white is super solid here. And we're just, like, free as a bird. <laughs> Let's see what... Immediate invasion. That's what I would expect. Yeah. Now we've got a game. Okay. So black is, like, influence is fine. Even though with the dual 3-4s, black is saying I want territory. At least that's my understanding. <clears throat> All right, slow it down. Let's look at this more carefully again. We covered on top. White wedge. This is really common. So a lot of times black will Atari from this side. And we have something like this, right? But this is too good for black. So... White might extend instead. And even so, something like this is... Something like this is really bad for black. So that's probably why black didn't do it. Probably why black played here. Okay. White connects. Black extends backwards to connect. And white just connects to his other group. Do we tiger's mouth here? Kind of, we take a jump. So, this jump, I mean, I would cut that too, right? Anybody would cut that. Oh, but we're attacking this group. Oh, okay. Extend. So this group is in a lot of danger, right? Can white push and cut? No, black will just keep extending and sacrifice the two stones, right? Pretty much, yeah. Do we connect? Do we connect more creatively? Maybe this way. Maybe directly. I'd be inclined to attach on the top.
we don't connect at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, this feels like this feels like a tie gem game, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's it's fun. This is a fun game. Right. That cut was coming. We all knew it was coming. How does Kim Shisok handle it against Kajay? Hane? Honey, we just give up the two stones. We give up the entire bottom. What? What on earth? Because we're after the center group. We're after all the groups. I don't even know what we're after anymore. Oh, I love this. <laughs> Don't we need to help these four stones attack the bottom group? <laughs> or is it just a lost cause? Maybe Hane here. This is a ladder breaker for this group. Aha. That's why we played here as white. And now what do we do? So maybe black is looking at surrounding this area, sacking the four stones, and potentially attacking this bottom group. Well, I kind of see a wall over here too. So maybe we're looking at large territories on the left and right while attacking the center group. <clears throat> Interesting. So if I'm right, black's just going to play straight down and use the Aji of this stone to surround this. But this corner for white is so huge. Okay, so I'm wrong. <laughs> so black's going to take the corner first, okay? <laughs> and then maybe drop down. So white's seeing a similar thing. And this group is kind of weak, so it makes sense that white would attack. Plus white can connect under or through with a move like this. Kiji. So strong. Mm, white will just Hane here. Hane here first, right. <sighs> this work. One, two, three, four, five liberties. One, two, three, maybe four liberties for black. This doesn't work. Maybe it's an I versus no I? See, this just looks like desperate. These are desperate moves I would make. Okay, so this is why I like him. He plays moves that I would make. <laughs> Even if maybe they don't work. Does this just create Aji? I mean, White did have to respond to every single move. One. Could turn into a Seki? Maybe. I don't think it can. We're already out though, right? We are attacking black shape here, or white shape here. On a, yeah. So, okay, I don't know if Peyton Bigsby is still in the chat or not, but, um, you see this? <laughs> you see how he just left this? <laughs> He's been doing it every single game. <laughs> These are my heroes, Peyton Bigsby. <laughs> and you wonder why I don't protect the cuts. <laughs> okay, so we are continuing to attack the left-hand white group. Can white live? Oh, we have to protect first. Now white can live, yeah. What? 
We have to connect. Or not. Oh, you clever devil. So, if black cuts on this side, we push through and capture. If black cuts through on this side, we connect and threaten the capture. And then we take... Oh, you, you clever, clever boy. Beautiful. Beautiful sequence. Maybe that was the purpose of this, just to... No way. Could it have been? It could have been, couldn't have it? In fact, I think it was. The purpose of this was just... Just to protect this connection later. Anohito, we are... This is Promancing the Stones, the series where I try to find my one true pro Go player soulmate. The pro I want to emulate. The pro whose games I want to memorize. The pro who's going to be the highest ideal of how I want my game to be. So, in keeping with the romance theme, we're having a one-on-one -on -one date with Kim Jisok tonight. <laughs> Where we review three of his games from the height of his career. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Now, the wedge. White's trying to live. It's one eye. Nimp? Oh. No. What? Why we know? <laughs> hold on. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Let's... So my move would be here. Why is this a bad move? If white plays here. And we connect. We place here. We connect again. Yeah, that just takes the eyes, right? <laughs> so, why did we instead play here? I am puzzled. Bamboo first. Oh, this is Sente. Got it. Okay. Connect. He takes. We cut. But what about this over here? Alright, that was Sente, yep. We tanuki this? Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, I guess White's just sealing in their area. Right, okay. Not necessarily Sente? Now White is dead? Wow. These guys Tanuki like like it's their jobs. And it kinda is their jobs. <laughs> These cut points. These cut points. <laughs> It's fine. It's all fine, right? Oh my goodness, look at that move. It's so beautiful. I can't believe Kajay lift this kind of weakness and made this kind of shape here. Wait, what? What? <laughs> hey, I just made this amazing move that kind of uh, destroys your entire center area, Tanuki. <laughs> But I guess it's big enough. 
Yeah, that's actually pretty huge. So White's going to respond, right? Hey, I'm going to kill your other big group. Okay. Ooh, fancy. Look at the fancy pants moves on this one. So we just enlarged our corner significantly. We're threatening to kill. And now we have a coal. Not a coal. Okay. Now we come back and take this. Got it. Connects there. Oh. That didn't really work. So what was the point of it? Just to make White come back and play again? Interesting. Now we're just taking Sente end game. Everybody's taking their end game. Wait, did White need to play there? Yes, because it's Ko. Or Ko or no? That's it. That's the end. That is the end. And our boy Kim Jisuk won by 0 0.5 points. Zero point five points. What a game. That's why I picked it, because I knew the the score at the end. Yeah, this shape is uh Something. This huge territory by Kuji. That would have. I would have been so freaked out as Black. I would have invaded that way soon. Um, but with the death on the left. Yeah. It's. Uh, that's compensation on this side. And then Black also has a pretty large right side. Might has a large. I mean, both of them have an equal amount of points, right? So. <laughs> 0 0.5 win. Well, by black. So black technically has like 7 or 8 points more on the board. Yeah. Fantastic game. So, things things I love about this. So, Kim Jisok, the first game we looked at, uh, he was under a lot of pressure almost the entire game, it seemed like, and then he turned it around with a couple codes and just won. Like, surprise, I win! And the second game, it was all about profiting through attacking. Uh, put, he put a lot of pressure on his opponents. He played lots of really cool Tsujis. There's lots of kind of like Hane type Tsujis where he'd Tanuki, opponent would cut, but he would still gain something out of it, which I found really interesting, really fascinating. And then this game was just fascinating. Both players fought tooth and nail, it seemed like the whole game. And then. Endgame is a struggle for me. Figuring out uh, the timing for different things, it's a real struggle. And this game very much was all about timing, but both players were profiting through attacking. Um, Kaji built up this huge, huge territory by attacking different groups on the left and right. But again, Kim Jisak took these like seemingly weak groups and even used 
like something that couldn't possibly work to protect his other group and connect it under, which this was the fascinating decision in here for me. The interaction between this group and this kill was very interesting. And that just shows a depth of reading that I'm just not yet capable of, to be honest. Um, yeah, all in all, uh, I love that he plays like Q-ish moves, like I would play, stuff I would play. Um, and he, he takes it and just uh, wins, he wins. And there's, in all of these games, there's a subtlety that I struggle with. That's the, <clears throat> it's okay to win by half a point. It's okay to win by seven points. Um, and it's something, like I want big wins, I want massive dragon kills, but sometimes it's better to just back off and take the seven and a half point win. Thanks so much for tuning in to Promancing the Stones. And if you love this content, feel free to, su to support it in any way that you like.